So today I'm actually going to be doing a, a tag that has been going around on YouTube. I believe it started by Emily Noel and it was essentially a like $1,000 Sephora fantasy basket type video. I'm going to be doing a bit of a different twist and I'll be doing fantasy basket for Mecca which is Australia's kind of version of Sephora. That part of it is inspired by Hayley O's take on the $1,000 Sephora fantasy basket video. I'm giving myself about $1,500 to work with. I've written everything on my phone, so I've got a big product mention list. Oh my god, if my phone can walk. I've also added it all in the um, description box below so you can find the information too. I actually went in order of what I do my like routine in. The first things on my list is the Mecca Cosmetica Hydrating Moisturiser. I don't know where I'll go. I either go over here and put it there, or over here and put it there. Actually, I put it over here. I'm trying to remember. Move over here. So over here, it'll pop up. Um, this is the Mecca Cosmetica, uh, yeah, Mecca Cosmetica Hydrating Moisturiser. I chose the 50ml size, it's 48 Australian dollars. It comes in like a little tub, it's about this big. And the actual top of it I really like. Much more sanitary compared to other creams because you push down the lid and pushing down the lid is what dispenses the product instead of actually having an open jar that you have to scrape your finger into and actually, you know, touch stuff and or expose it to oxygen as well, which can be a factor. Next product that's on my list is the BioEffect EGF Serum. This thing here, um, it's $195, a little bit pricey, but the reason why I really like that, and once I get that specifically, I, um, I got a sample of it. That's just like a little sample bottle. I've got that in a loyalty box from Mecca called Beauty Loop. And I, like I said, that was a sampling beauty loop and I really liked the way it worked. I actually paired that with this serum when I did have it and it worked well on my skin. Next product I've got on my list is the Clinique to take the day off cleansing balm. I got the 125ml size, I chose that. That's $56. That one I chose because I've been more getting away from using wipes and cotton pads to clean my face and I've been more moving towards using removal balms. Like lately I've been using this from Gerard. You would have seen this if you watched my last video. This is the Slay Away The Day Makeup Removing Balm. This is in the um, scent Rose. After actually like using it, significantly more pleasant than what it smelled like when I first initially smelled it in the video. It smelled like hydrogen peroxide. I'll do that as a first cleanse and then I'll go in with my cellar water or the same brand that does this also has a cleanser and I'll just use that as like a secondary cleanser to remove it because I feel like this leaves behind a residue on my face and I don't like the feeling of that residue. But it's kind of like contradictory like I was just talking about how I chose to get the makeup removing balm because you know I'm trying to move away from wipes and my literally next item is <laughs> the new face prep and go 20 pack. The main reason why I wanted to get these, these are not planning on actually getting to use as like daily removers. They're double sided so one side is really smooth and then the other side has like these little bumps put all over it and it's an exfoliating wipe and I found that it was really nice. I also got that as a sample in my Mecca Beauty Loop and I really liked how that performed and for more so like the exfoliating side of it and I really liked how it did the job well I felt compared to when I've used like other exfoliators in the form of like little gloves or other wipes or whatever and they weren't as harsh but it, there is the downside of it being you know single use type thing but I also feel like that I wouldn't be using I'd, I'd be counteracting it enough with the use of like makeup removal balm and stuff that it's not as bad but it still isn't the best but I forgot to read it out. The Drunk Elephant, oh, Drunk Elephant TLC Happy Scalp Scrub. This is the $58. I chose this one because, again, I got it as a sample in my Mecca Beauty Loop box. And I found it was really nice for, like, cleaning up the scalp. Because while I do shampoo and condition, not, like, daily, but I try and do it every second or third day, I'll at least shampoo. Um, 
I find that it just sometimes isn't enough if it's extremely dry. It's not so much of an issue now that I've shaved all my hair off, but when I had longer hair, I definitely found it was an issue. But I loved the sample I got of the Drunk Elephant TLC Happy Scrub. It, it just really made my scalp feel nice and clean and exfoliated, I guess. It just felt nice. So now I got that in. The subtotal so far for skin and hair care, 389. So it's not too bad, not too bad. This is where it gets pricey, getting to complexion. So you know, base, fun time. First thing that I included in my complexion is the Jouer Essential High Coverage Foundation. I chose the shade Alabaster. I just used the shade matching thing through um, Mecca and that comes to $61. I chose that one because I've heard a lot of great things about Jouer. Love the packaging, it looks nice as well. Gives me kind of like a little bit of Estee Lauder double wear type vibes with the packaging, kind of. I think, might be wrong. Oh well, don't quote me. But um, I just really like it, the sound of it. I've heard good things about Jouer from multiple YouTubers and I'm like, stuff that I wanna try it out. After that, I also chose the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I got, chose the 50 mil option. That one is 88 Australian dollars. Again, another product that I've heard a lot of great things about and I've just not ponied up to pay the price because I've never really cared to invest a lot in primer or like a, oh yeah, I guess it is a primer. Like I said, I've heard great things about it from multiple YouTubers. I've also tried the Bobbi Brown eyeliner, the gel pot. I used to use that for older looks. I've moved on to other eyeliners now, but that was a really nice one. I chose a couple of concealers because I've heard good things about these two concealers. So I chose, first one is the, oh my God, I need to move over a bit. It's the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. The NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I think it's pronounced Chantilly, or Chantilly. It's $48. Um, again, like a lot of items in this, I've heard good things about it from different influencers on YouTuber, on, on YouTube. YouTuber, that are YouTubers on YouTube, duh. But um, I've heard good things about the product. I've also tried the NARS foundation. I didn't like it so much, but I've heard for what the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer is like, it will be what I'm looking for in a concealer. Next item is the Kevin Aquan. Kevin Aqua? Don't know how it's pronounced, sorry. Sorry, Kevin. Rest in peace. Um, the Essential Skin Enhancer, I chose, or I got the shade SX01, or that's what was shade matched to me, for $77. Again, that's one I've heard a lot of really good things about, and I really like the look of it. The packaging looks really sleek as well, so it's just one that I chose. I chose two setting powders. One, I've always had my eye on since I started my love fetish fucking hourglass. Um, I should talk about that in a second. But I first chose the, the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. I chose the travel size version in Translucent. I haven't tried the, uh, the setting powder at all. I haven't really tried anything from Laura Mercier other than one product that I'll talk about in a second. It's also in this list. Um, I chose this because talking to my friend Isabel and she really likes this. I've also heard it's supposed to have a really nice texture, especially under the under eyes. I've yet to find a setting powder that I like under my under eyes. I've powdered everything on my face with just a translucent setting powder, but I've actually left my under eyes alone. The next product though, the one that I would actually probably, one of the first I would legitimately buy out of this whole list, is the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I chose the 10.5 gram version, which is the full size, and that one's $74. Looks so beautiful. It's expensive though, but I love the packaging. Just love Hourglass. I've literally not had a single Hourglass product I don't really like once I've learned how it works. Like, I used to not like the Hourglass under eye, or the under eye, just concealer, but I've learned how to work with it and make it work. I've just learned that it doesn't like being set. I mean, it's not the best close up, but you can kind of see it looks really nice. I've got a little bit of creasing naturally, but otherwise it's really good and even close up. And let's see, I haven't even checked in a bit, but even close up, 
it's not the best, but like I'd be happy with it going out. It definitely would like if you got close up, you can see a little bit of texture and where it's breaking apart in just my natural creasing. But compared to other ones, it almost like while it breaks apart, it still retains most of its um, coverage. It's interesting. Hi. What? That's what I thought. <laughs> Birds just staring at me being quiet now. But yeah, so that was the hourglass powder. The next product I chose, which was a bronzer, I chose the NARS, oh, the NARS matte bronzing powder. I think it's pronounced Falata. However, it's pronounced $60. Um, I've only tried one NARS powder product, the NARS blush, and that's Orgasm, the blush. Yeah. Hi. Um, so, I chose that because it looks like it's the lightest bronzer that will work on me. And all of my bronzers that I do currently have, they're all sparkly. And while I don't mind necessarily having a bit more of a sparkly base, like you can't really see it on camera especially, but in person I have a lot of glitteriness around here, which is just where my contour and stuff is. Because of this and my hourglass um, contour, Product. This is the ambient lighting in dim light and it's dark enough to do contouring on me. Next product that I got and what I was <coughs> talking about from Laura Mercier before is the Laura Mercier Blush Infusion. I'm not sure what shade I wanted to go with so I just like only factored in the price of one but I've included two shades that I would be between and it's chai and rose. The shade I personally own um, I went, I won this in a giveaway from David Lackey on Twitter, and this is the shade Kurt Royale. I, might, I probably butchered the pronunciation, but this looks really dark, but it actually works surprisingly well on my skin. It, it, it's very sheer. You have to build it up, which I quite like in a blush. I don't want it to be so heavily pigmented straight up. But yeah, so like I said, it's a mixture between chai and rose, and honestly, looking at the two of them quickly, I'd probably more likely go with rose, as I do tend to prefer more pinky red tones on me compared to more browny, peachy tones. Next product I added to this is the Jouer Powder Highlighter in Ice for $38. I chose that one specifically because I really like silvery, light, icy, highlighters on myself personally and it's described as a shimmer pearl with gold reflex so while it does have a little bit of gold and I mean this is the highlighter that I've used today this is the one from um, Hourglass is the ambient strobe lighting powder and this is an incandescent strobe light and this is almost is like a, an iridescence with a slight pinkish gold shift you can kind of see it so I mean I'm not averse to having gold as a reflex in my products but it just looks really pretty another hourglass product because I'm obsessed with hourglass I just I just need them all this is the hourglass veil setting spray for $77 um, the next product after this is a Mac product but I'm just going to reference it as well as the slave day and the star gem setting spray these are probably like my three favorite setting sprays that I've ever used the scent does sometimes irritate my eyes and so does this one if I like use it close to my inner corners but ultimately scents don't really do too much unless it's like a really strong astringent or cleaning type scent which even though I really like lemon and that it's not good for my eyes I've just found I like it on the face but not the eyes but I've heard that the Veil setting spray is supposed to be really good and it is a mist rather than like a, so our uh, Max is like a, like it's, it's not a nice gentle stream while the like Star Gem one is a bit more of like a nice, even though that does spurt, it's got more of a fine mist and same with the, like, oh yes, love it like the sleigh all day it does have a little bit of a more spurting but fine mist i've heard that the hourglass one is supposed to be really like fine almost like the air itself has condensation in it rather than you're spraying your face with water 
and I like the sound of it and plus hourglass it looks bougie it sounds bougie I just I want to feel the fantasy like I just said before next product that I'm going to be talking about is the Mac Pet uh, Mac Prep and Prime Fix Plus in the rose scent this is $39 I've so far had this which is just the normal Fix Plus I'm very close to empty <laughs> very close and I used to also have the I think it's the Cucumber and Tea Mini from one of their limited edition sets loved it I love using this as a not tech, not necessarily as a setting spray because this one it, it's a bit it leaves like big droplets of water and I can fix it by going over with a powder brush or a brush and like tapping on my face and it kind of melts it in but I love using this because this one specifically because no real like scent that annoys my eye and I don't really think I'd have an issue with rose I just like the sound of rose and plus I could just couldn't find the normal one on Mecca's website so you can kind of factor in I might just get the normal one in this case if it was fantasy basket I just probably would more so go with plain but for sakes of the video I added the rose one because whatever um, I really like using the fix plus for foiling eyeshadows and using on my eyes because unlike the other setting sprays that I was mentioning before where the scents are a bit too strong for my eyes I really like using fix plus near the eye area I don't know if it's supposed to be but it just foils shadows and makes glitters stick if I'm not using a glitter adhesive it works really well and it, it makes the skin feel nice and it's all nourishing, all that BS that's inside of it. The subtotal for that so far is $674 just for complexion. So together it would be, shit, just over a grand now. $1,036. Next kind of category is eyes. So one of the first things that I added to eyes when I got to eyes was, you can guess it, Hourglass, the Hourglass Unlocked Mascara. So, I've got a sample size of the Caution Mascara. This is like the third tube I've purchased. Oh, the, sorry, the third tube of the sample size I've purchased. I haven't bought the full size because I don't use it often enough to justify the full size. And like this usually, I'll get close to empty by the time it dries out anyways. So I'm fine with just going with the minis. Um, there wasn't a mini available on the Australian website, so I didn't choose that one. This one's the full size for $46. But I like the sound of this one. And it supposedly is a tubing mascara. I don't know too much about tubing mascaras. As far as I'm aware, it's supposed to be easier to remove because it tubes and like you can almost like gently slide it off. I don't find this as difficult to remove. I usually use like balm or before I was using balms, I would use a, a wipe. I'd hold like a, a wipe on the lashes and just gently like pull the mascara off. I haven't tried the Unlock Mascara yet. Sounds good. I love Hourglass. I've really liked Caution. Like I said, I've been using Caution. or well, I've been using this for almost a year now. Actually, no, over a year now. Love it. At least, not this tube, but using the same formula. Next product. I chose these ones because I've heard a lot about it from like other influencers as well. And they just look really pretty. This is the Lily Lashes in Miami. They're foam ink for $42. Which is a bit on the pricey side for lashes. And I mean, I've got plenty of options that I've gotten through PR and otherwise that, that will do just fine. But this is a fantasy basket. And you know what, why not? At it. And these ones I really like the look of because they seem to have like slightly longer spikes and a slightly shorter spike and they'll be next to each other so you get one long one short one long one short and I really like that style of lash on myself when I've had similar types of lashes before so that's what I ended up just going with so the next product that I chose after that is the Hourglass 1.5 millimeter in size mechanical gel liner for $29 so it looks like it's just a little liner that winds up and it has a 1.5 millimeter tip at the end I've heard this is supposed to be good for tight lining, water lining, and then also for doing winged eyeliner. I really like, I really like my KBD Vegan Beauty tattoo liner. 
So it's the felt tip liner. It's really nice. I'm just not gonna dry my hand waste product. I want to actually try the hourglass pen liner, but I just didn't add it to my wish list because I chose a different one. Anyways, so I want to get the hourglass one because I've been constantly looking for a black liner to put in like a for tight lining and for water line. And I just like hourglass. It looks really nice and sleek. It goes with their packaging and aesthetic. So and it's actually not too bad for $29. I would actually legitimately contemplate getting it. Next product. Speaking of eyeliner, the Steeler Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. And this one I chose specifically because it has the micro tip. It's for $35. Again, my favourite liner that I currently use is the Tattoo Liner from KVD Vegan Beauty. And it seems like the actual Steeler one has a smaller tip than this. And while I don't find the size of that is an issue, it'd just be fun to see what it would be like to use a smaller eyeliner. So I'm just looking to see what the bird's doing. Hi! His bed's are just over there. Next product, and one that I have the this for. So I actually want to get the full size of this, which is the NARS Power Matte Lip Pigment. And this is in the shade American Woman. Love this lipstick. It's pretty much the same shade as what I'm wearing on my lips currently. It's just, this is the Star Gem Cosmetics lipstick compared to the NARS. This is a, essentially a color dupe, but I still really like this formula. I find that the Star Gem one is much more long wear, but it's very matte while this is much more of a, a, a soft comfort matte type finish, it just doesn't last as long. This lasts forever, it's great. I don't know if I mentioned it, the Power Matte Lip Pigment is $42. One thing I really like about the applicator for the NARS lipsticks, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but they're like a little pointed bullet and they've got a really sharp edge. So they're great for lining your lips while also applying the lip product and it just it just works really well to go with that i also chose the nars satin lip pencil in balboa i believe that's how it's pronounced and that's 43 dollars and i chose that one because it seems like the closest shade color wise that will work with the nars lip pencil but it also looks like a sh similar shade to this which is the gerard cosmetics lip pencil and this is in the shade sure sorry it's a little bit dirty in the way not the most sharp I've been using this and I haven't sharpened it yet. But really like this. I haven't tried the NARS Lip Pencil. I love the formula for the NARS Lip, or Power Matte Lip Pigment, so I'm sure the Lip Pencil's pretty good. They do have a matte formula, I believe, of the Lip Pencils. I just prefer the color of the satin one, so that's what I went with. So the subtotal so far for everything that I've so far mentioned is $1,273. So getting very close to the end. My last couple of items that I chose. Toca Florence Eau de Parfum for $122. I chose the 50ml size. This was a form a, a foundation. Foundation. My brain. Nope. It's not foundation. It's a fucking perfume. Fragrance. No, this fragrance I actually got as a sample in my beauty loot box and I really liked the scent of it. I don't really care about feminine, masculine scents. Don't give a shit. It smells like jasmine. I love jasmine. I want jasmine forever in my body. Second last product that I have in my basket. Wow, didn't take long to go through. Anastasia Beverly Hills eyebrow stencils for $37. So these, it looks like you get four different cards and they have little cutouts of eyebrow shapes and you just hold them on your face and you kind of draw them on. Clearly, I don't have any brows. So, I mean, this would be just a fun product to grab and, you know, whack on a, a pretend eyebrow without really having to think about the shape and the style or whatever because there's already a pre-made kind of template for me. And I think it, it, it looks cool, it sounds cool on Mecca, as I don't know if you notice in the thing, there's no actual reviews for it, so I don't know how good it actually is. I ju it just interests me. I'm interested. I'm intrigued. Last item. Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Concealer Brush. This is $61, which is obscene for a brush, considering, you know, the brushes I was literally talking about, I'm using um, you know, this Star Gem brush, and my um, normal concealer brush is this from Morphe. Again, it's dirty because I used it today. They're all cheap brushes, even for me in Australia. They're all under $10 Australian. And I chose a $61 
concealer brush from Hourglass. And to be perfectly honest, I actually had to force myself to choose other items, otherwise three quarters of this would have been Hourglass, and the majority of it would have actually been their brushes, because I've just been eyeing them off, like the $100 double-ended brush. Oh. That's for like powder and then they've also got a 71, 70 plus dollar one that is for their like ambient lighting powders. I want that in my life. So main reason why I chose this concealer brush from Hourglass is because it is supposed to be designed to work with this specifically because they have another concealer brush but it's not the Vanish line and it specifically is the Vanish Seamless Finish Concealer Brush. So in my mind it's like they must have done something special with it to work with this specific product. So, and I clearly own this specific product and I've been liking it enough to continue using it. So I'm almost, am curious as to what is special about the brush. I've heard it's supposed to be a lot larger than this. Like it's a little bit thicker, it's like that I believe, but I don't really care. I like the shape of that and that looks like it's, it's from memory, it sounds like it's designed to almost mimic like a finger tapping on your face, and I guess you could just use your finger instead of a 61 fucking dollar brush, but I want the brush. I've got all these other hourglass things. Might as well complete the set, get some brush. That brings us to the end. That's so strange. I've got all of these products, and I didn't even actually hit the total of 1,500. I actually got a grand total of $1,493 with all of this together. And I mean, that's pretty decent for, like, I got 25 products. I spent $1,493 on my $1,500 budget that I allocated myself for this fantasy basket. The majority of these products are things that I've either tried before or I've had similar products to, or they're items that I've heard about and I just want to try. And I just haven't justified them because of the price. So yeah, so that's my video. Thank you for watching. It's a bit strange having a beat on that I didn't even do during this video. And I don't even have mascara on. I just have some stuff on my eyes, just stuff on my face. Look basic, boring, fabulous. You know how it is. Thank you so much for watching the video today. Hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a bit different compared to my last couple of videos. It definitely doesn't have as much, you know, fabulous, fantastic type of cinematography or videography or whatever. It probably won't even be that flash when it comes to editing, but it is what it is. This idea I've, I've had since I saw Haley's video and it intrigued me and I had a lot of fun just going through Mecca's website and spending $1,500 spending it. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Have a grassy day. Say goodbye, my birds. Say goodbye from Tasmania. Yeah. Come on. Bye.